All right, enough hints. Time to get to what I consider to be already the best aspect of Total War Pharaoh, which is sieges. Yes, if you, you can see by looking at the mini-map here, um, and just overall by looking at the massive amount of space being utilized here, that proper sieges are back in Total War. This map in particular really reminds me of, like, the epic maps of Rome 2 sieges, and... I'm very happy about that. Honestly, Warhammer Sieges are one of the worst parts of that game. I'm very, very happy to be back in the command of a properly sized battlefield like this. Let's take a look at the compositions of my defenders here first. We've got some Axe Warriors here, Upper Egyptian Mace Axe Warriors, quickly becoming one of my favorite units in the game already. We've got some Lower Egyptian Veteran Spearmen here as well, sort of all working to defend this space. Since none of them has ranged weapons, I didn't park them on the walls. We're just going to try to defend behind. Here, hidden in the woods, three Sheridan Raiders with their heavy javelins, a couple of elite Kopesh infantry, the Medjay Warriors here to hold this section of the wall. Next to them, a couple of Medjay Spearmen. Uh, Ramses and all of his archers are mounted up here on the wall as there's a lot of unshielded opponents in this area that I can try and shoot down as they approach, and then through the rest, we've got some more shirt and axe bodyguards, and a couple more uh, medjay axemen here as well. Yeah, decent armor on these guys. They've got the precursor awls as well, I think. Uh, actually, good armor piercing on them, so maybe they have the precursor javelins, but uh, anyway. Yeah, also have a weapon switch, I think. Yes, two-handed melee weapon switch, so... Definitely something that I'm going to forget to use, but it does exist. Oh, also this chariot here, medium bow chariot, uh, swooped up and around to try and get out here and start skirmishing and harassing. The opponent this time is going to be the Sea People, a.k.a. the Aegeans. We've got some seafaring raider swordsmen here, marauding axe chargers, two-handed axemen here, uh, some armored archers, Aegean armored archers. Very cool unit, look to be very strong. Uh, through this other side here, we've got some more Marauding Axe Chargers, some Seafaring Slingers, Aegean Fame Seekers, two-handed club infantry at uh, Tier 2. Very high charge bonus and good damage with, uh, what is that, Armor Piercing? Yep, Armor Piercing, so yeah, very high damage, honestly, overall. Two-handed uh, Spear Chargers, so that's going to be a Spear Unit with a high charge bonus. Uh, fame Seekers, and then sort of the Elites here. We've got some Kopesh Warriors, some roving Kopesh Warriors, uh, some more Seafaring Slings, Islander Heavy Axemen, and then over here some more Heavy Axemen, some more Seafaring Raiders, some Javelins, Seafaring Javelins, and an Armored Archer. So let's get things rolling. Of course, you know the mechanics fairly well. They've got Towers, We've got these buildings here. The victory points now actually have effects. So, like this one, this temple here will heal units that are standing within it locally. The palace and the marketplace both give a map-wide morale buff, as you can see from the tooltip there. So, multiple capture points is always nice. Um, and just overall, I would say, um, yeah, the mechanics are... Pretty interesting. You can see they're shooting fire arrows already. Fire is going to be a key component to this game. My chariots are coming to try and kind of skirmish and disrupt a little bit here, but taking some fairly significant damage. Uh, because there's no artillery, fire becomes one of the main tools of um, sort of defeating a town, right? You can see the siege towers are here, but as you'll notice when these units approach, the butthole ladders have been removed, thankfully. One of the biggest complaints from the game what that means is you'll actually need to spend time preparing in the campaign layer, according to them. Preparing for a siege, obviously you've got rams, you've got siege towers, both of which we see here. You do have the ability as well to construct construct saps, which will essentially like uh, break a section of the wall, right? Um, and you'll uh, start the battle with some breaches already sort of randomly set at various points in the city wall uh, based on how many saps you construct again in the campaign layer but uh, I think personally it's a great way to handle sieges between again fire arrows as in Attila can burn stuff down and we'll see that more here in just a second but currently Ramses and his bowmen are certainly putting the hurt on these approaching Aegeans as they try and get up close to this gate over here yeah a lot of units already been routed off but some of those uh, fame seekers are getting up onto the wall over on this side, 
archers moving into position. We'll see. If they switch to fire arrows, they could start to burn down the forest or the, the town. But right now, my uh, my chariots taking serious armor damage and also serious HP damage. But we're going to try and use them. Maybe go after some of these enemy light skirmishers who are currently counter skirmishing my own archers. But it's just about time to pull back with the enemies approaching. So we're going to move my archers up into a secondary position here. Meanwhile, over on this side, still just holding, waiting for the Aegeans to complete their advance up on the walls. Looks like one of the gates now has been broken by that ram. And over here as well, just kind of waiting. I have taken some damage on my uh, axe, mace axe warriors. Egyptian, or sorry, Aegean armored archers able to skirmish from a, an extreme distance. And archers, 200 range on those uh, elite archers there, so... Uh, the archers are definitely the artillery of this game in many ways. Again, because there's less unit variety, the internal variety within a given unit class has been significantly uh, increased, right? And we see that there with... Uh, I don't think there's any archers in Warhammer uh, 3 that have 200 range. A little bit of frame rate issues going on there. Apologize about that. Again, this game is in early access, but now we see the archers starting to switch to fire arrows. As they kind of shoot my surgeon, yeah, Sheridan Axe bodyguards. Yeah, some pretty, pretty noticeable lag at points here, but that's okay. The Geans are starting to come down from the walls, and this particular point here of my defense is probably the weakest. The Geans have a lot of value mass, especially with these archers. And considering how tattered my chariots are, how much armor those archers have, I'm not very confident my chariot could deal with them hence why it's here dealing with these lighter units um, but we've pretty much broken this entire center section for the most part so i can then kind of reorganize my archers over to this section to try and help out with this big advance here but fire has started and that is going to be an issue so notice how these axe warriors um yeah taking damage and also if we take a look at some of the effects here um burnt which is going to decrease their morale as well. The heat is sweltering. It's very, very hot right now, which will in increase the rate of fire spread and also increases the rate of fatigue. But uh, yeah, fire is starting to take hold in this little section of that forest, which is going to be a problem for sure in the long run. But let's swing back over to the other side of the battlefield here. Uh, the Medjay Spearmen trying their best to hold out. We've got these Sheridan Raiders in a nice position to throw some javelins into this engagement. Got a nice surround on the units trying to breach the gate here. And this is this is classic Total War action right here. Just defending the gates. You now got a full surround. Units using their missiles to try and bust those blobs. Over here, same thing. Spearmen and Axemen are now in combat as the Aegeans start to come down off the walls. Still hanging some units in reserve for the time being. As this engagement will take some time to play out. But just in general, there's... Uh, you know, good amount of time, good amount of space to work with, make tactical decisions. And overall, I feel the intention at least was for battles to feel a little bit longer in this game, right? But uh, anyway, I'm curious. It does look like the Seafaring Raiders are actually taking a little bit of damage as they run through this flaming forest, which does make sense. Uh, okay, so Raider units, as in Attila, will just kind of passively set fire to stuff if you have this raiding stance turned on which is pretty interesting but yeah they definitely took a lot of damage running through that burning forest so not only does fire um you know deal morale damage also deals real physical damage and uh let's see will it actually end up spreading to the buildings here or will it mostly stay contained to the trees obviously a lot of these buildings are made of mostly stone so definitely helps out for fire suppression anyway over here, things are going pretty well. We've managed to intercept pretty much everything. Slinger's getting run down by some Mace Axe Warriors. And let's just watch some beautiful cinematics. There's a lot going on all across the battlefield all at the same time, but it's mostly the same type of... Oh, man, that was a nice little... Oh, yeah, I like that animation. That's a fancy little face slap right there. <laughs> anyway... Yeah, we're able to mostly prevail here again in the center. The chariots have taken such extreme damage, but still are able to be mildly useful in this late game. Trying to clean up some of this stuff, but I'm pretty worried, to be honest. 
This push still has a lot of meat left. There's still a lot of archers alive with the flames kind of burning themselves out to a degree. It looks like they didn't have too many other places to spread to. Uh, now we can see the ground's all like burnt. The trees are all ashy. I love, love that effect personally. Um, but I don't know if it ends up actually like I know in Attila, the devastation level of the town would have an overall effect. So like the more stuff burned down, the more leadership would be lost or morale would be lost rather from uh, defending units. But I don't think that's the case in this one. At least I don't see anywhere in the UI. Oh, settlement destruction. Here we go. Still at 0%. So there is a, a morale, melee attack, melee defense, and fatigue modifier the more the settlement gets destroyed. Interesting stuff to think about. But the archers are just about out of ammunition for me, which means I'm going to have to pull them back and just continue to concede ground here um, while I try and get some reinforcements um, from some of these winning engagements to swing up and help those archers out. The chariots. Long-suffering running across the battlefield, doing their best to try and defend these streets. Not super great operating in woods in a town. It's like a pretty in ideal scenario for them, it must be said. But yeah, just overpowering force here with the javelins and everything else. We're able to pretty decisively win with quite a bit of value left. I'm going to have to dispatch some units to come back over here, though, as this push also still has quite a bit of teeth as well. We're starting to route off some stuff, though. Let's get in close and watch some of these Aegeans. I love the Aegean outfits and armor as well. They definitely look more like Troy, which, given the you know geographical area, definitely makes sense. I do like how visually distinct the different factions are, even though it's just a bunch of dudes in bronze armor and cloth and stone weapons and whatnot. It still looks very, very cool. Um, and the designers have generally done a pretty good job of helping the factions to feel distinct and unique visually, even despite those limitations. Yeah, the Axemen charge in there and it's gonna help burst these units down. Oh, yeah, some of the matched animations actually look quite nice, to be honest. We'll just kind of watch for a minute, allow you guys to enjoy some of those as they play out, but... Yeah, the, uh, the AI is sending some units kind of scattering across the field here, I guess, to go try and capture some of these other objectives. I'm not really sure. Like, this Axeman in particular is kind of going on a little bit of a journey there, but that's okay. <laughs> Mostly the AI is making a competent push on my town uh, for the most part, but we'll see. As I start to kind of spread out and it gets towards more of the later part of this game... They, I might struggle a little bit to keep all of their units focused into a cohesive push. But let's see here what we can do. I fast forward a little bit through this mid game as we sort of reorganize. I get my javelins up towards the temple here. Although I could just appreciate this combat for a minute as these Mace Axe Warriors run down the last of the Aegean heavy archers. Managed to get themselves exposed here in the town and eaten up by those high damage melee units. Over here, same thing. Heavy Aegeans, despite their massive shields and bronze armor. Still just getting ground down by the two-handed axemen of Egypt here. Spearmen able to sustain this assault for quite some time, despite the fact they are pretty considerably outclassed by the Aegean units they're facing here. Their own defensive nature allows them to, like I said, last. That's that's what I need from them. The axes can do the damage. Uh, looks like this axe unit, uh, these axe marauders, did actually come to capture this palace. So the AI is successfully engaging one objective at least. They still have some units also in a somewhat cohesive push onto the temple right now. So archers, you can see, are all healing from the temple. Uh, their HP is regenerating ever so slightly, uh, up to however many unit models they have left alive, right? It doesn't actually resurrect unit models at all, but that definitely helps just to keep that HP topped up. We've also got the Sheridan Raiders moving in, so the idea here is just to use the Bowman as an anvil at this point and hammer with the Javelins, try and do some damage. Uh, Barisone here, or Barisone, the leader of the sea people army His bodyguards getting quite low 
and it doesn't look like they actually had a charge order onto my spears, so hopefully we can kind of just keep him bottled up in this position for the time being. Sheridan Raiders out of ammunition. Don't have the best melee stats, but decent melee damage, actually. I mean, I don't really... I haven't really gone through each unit to take the time to compare, like, what's good and what's bad in terms of stats, but at least they have armor-piercing javelins, which definitely seems quite solid. Yeah, more uh, axe infantry there, or roving Kapesh warriors, rather, moving in on that engagement, but I've got my own Medj infantry. Oh, it looks like the fire did actually spread as slowly, but eventually these stone buildings did light on fire. I guess the wooden beams on the inside can burn, which, again, does make sense. And this whole section of the town is now burning, but thankfully I'm not having to fight there. We're still only 3% settlement destruction as well, so it's not really having much of an impact on uh, on any unit's stats yet. But let's get in close, watch these archers as they try and hold out against the heavy infantry of the Aegean's javelins. Using up the last of their ammunition. They still have a little bit left in the tank, but these heavy javelin infantry can also move in and be effective melee fighters. Oh man, look at the sort of Pharaoh's bow guard as well. They have these little bucklers with their bows. Nice little combination of things. Definitely appreciate the aesthetics of that. And yeah, things are looking pretty good. We've been, managed to break most of these units here. Quickly, the Aegeans are approaching army losses, especially as little old Bear Sony's bodyguard gets routed off here. I'm not sure the man himself where exactly he's at in this combat, but rest assured it's a victory for Egypt, and it's the most fun I've had playing a siege in Total War um, in a long time. I'm going to be honest with you. It felt pretty good. All things considered, the AI uh, still, you know, has a little bit of issues, probably, as is the case with pretty much every Total War. I mean, Pathfinding also. Um, even in the best Total War games of all time, like Medieval 2, Siege Pathfinding was still an issue. So I'm not really surprised to see that it is a little bit of an issue here. I didn't really highlight it too much in the video, but there were a few times where, like those Axemen, for example, that were chasing the Slingers, um, sort of towards the left center, um, they had a few issues with their pathing where I had to manually kind of tell them where to go and then give an attack order but overall it seemed pretty good I really appreciate the no butt ladders I appreciate the fire mechanics I appreciate you know the ability to sap even though it wasn't a part of this battle specifically historically is such an important part of siege warfare and it's been absent from so many total war games that it's really quite strange honestly Really like to see that come back here and just overall found this again to be the one of the most enjoyable sieges if not the most enjoyable siege I've played since maybe Rome 2, honestly, or Attila. Hard to say, but just overall very good. Um, despite the fact I was heavily outnumbered, I still felt like I had all the tools I needed to win, but it definitely felt like a desperate defense at times. Anyway, let's go over the army damage values here. Ramses gets a respectable amount of kills with his archer bodyguard, but actually gets outshined by many of the archer units here. Chariots also, despite me kind of ham-fisting them, were able to get 335 kills. Mop up, excuse me, a lot of enemy skirmishers. Spears do a nice job of holding. Even one of them gets 700 value on their own fighting, which is just fantastic. The Axe Warriors continue to be an awesome DPS unit. Um, just great value overall on all three of them there. The Javelins, likewise, also contributed some very key DPS. The Shirt and Axe Bodyguards this time around got absolutely crushed for the most part, but I did kind of put them into the thick of the fighting, where the, uh, yeah, the Aegeans had the majority of their value. But it's definitely interesting. The Elite Medjay Warriors, as expected, performed fairly well for infantry. And then on the other side here, yeah, I mean, for the Aegean AI, kind of makes sense that a lot of stuff is going to struggle value-wise, given the kind of situation that they're in. Uh, a couple of the Rotting Axe Chargers did manage to get some really nice value, though. And the Archers also, man, these elite Aegean Armored Archers are going to be such a pain to deal with in multiplayer and in, in campaign as well. Such a strong unit and definitely make me want to try playing the Aegeans, if, if just for them only, to be honest, but... Yeah, so multiplayer sieges. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. I definitely think that that's something I'm going to be showcasing on my channel. Like, I might do some light land battles in this game. It's not something I'm super interested in. I definitely will play the campaign for myself and enjoy it. 
I would imagine. I mean, I haven't had a chance to yet, but I can't imagine that it's... Uh, I mean, if assuming it's Total War, I'd probably enjoy it. Um, multiplayer land battles, perhaps here or there, but definitely, like, team multiplayer sieges is something that I really want to showcase on my channel going forward because it's so much fun. This is, again, it's like Rome 2 in many ways, but just the amount of space you have, have like a 4v4 siege, you actually have the space to do it on this type of a map, right? And it would just be such an epic experience to play and showcase, um, you know, in casting. So who knows, maybe I'll end up doing some Pharaoh like siege tournaments or events. And just generally that seems to be for me, what sets it apart from Warhammer is the sieges for sure. So definitely look for more of that in the future. Let me know your guys thoughts in the comments down below. If I'm gushing a little bit, it's because I legitimately enjoyed my experience with the siege battle. So hopefully you did as well. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.